Hi everyone and welcome back. Okay, so today I'm going to be reviewing the Daily Rowney Aquafine watercolour paper. It's not going to be any old review. I'm actually going to tape some of this to my board and we're going to be testing it out on camera and seeing how it behaves. Now the first thing that struck me with this paper was it's a jumbo pad and there's 50 sheets in there and it only costs £15.39 pence or £15.50, something like that. Between £15 and £16 pounds you can buy 50 sheets of A4 watercolour paper. Now that's a bargain, that's an absolute bargain. Um, and because it was so cheap, it put me off buying it. I thought, well, it's got to be rubbish at that price. But I'd heard some good reports about this, so I thought, well, I'll check it out, because at that price, even if I don't like the paper, I'm sure to you know use it for swatching out or use it for something. I always find a use for things like this, even if I don't like them for their intended purpose. So, you know, I bought this pad and I've done half a dozen little sketches and paintings with it so far, and I'm absolutely delighted with it. You know, it ticks all the boxes. You know, it's okay for um, pencils, watercolour. It's acid free, which is very important. That means it's not going to yellow with time. It's going to stay nice and white. Um, like I say, 50 sheets, A4 size. Um, £140 weight, which is an average weight for a watercolour paper. It's the most common um, weight. Um, so it's like I say, it ticks all the boxes. And this one is actually cold pressed. So it's got some texture on there. Now, the, although it says cold pressed, if I can just kind of angle this in the lights for you. Um, the texture on it's quite rough, actually. I was quite surprised. It seems a little bit rougher than the usual cold pressed paper. Now I like that. I prefer a rougher grain, actually, because uh, most of my work, um, as you know, are, are landscape paintings and drawings and things like that. And that extra texture uh, means you can get nice dry brush effects for trees um, and all sorts of things. You know, that texture in the paper um, can really help you, you know, create lovely effects on the paper. Although if you're trying to get a really super fine detail, maybe a smoother paper, it might be more suitable for you. But I really like the grain and the texture on this paper. Now it's not 100% cotton paper, it's 100% cellulose. You know, and what would you expect at that kind of price <laughs> for that amount, you know, in all honesty. Um, now one of the other papers that I use, if you if you watch this channel, you, you're probably aware that I use a lot of Bockingford watercolour paper. Um, and again, Bockingford is a cellulose paper, or wood pulp paper, made from wood pulp. Um, and I really like Bockingford paper because it's affordable and it's not bad quality, it's very good quality. In fact, a lot of professional artists use Bockingford watercolour paper. And it's one of the papers that I recommend um, to my members over on Patreon, you know, when they're just starting out with watercolour. Um, because it's a minefield out there, you know, of different practice papers and student grade papers. Um, you know, and it's, it's really hard to find a good quality paper at an affordable price and Bockingford again it ticks all the boxes you know it's reasonably affordable and it's very good quality and you can produce outstanding work on it even though it's 100% cellulose and there's no cotton in it at all um, but I was recently asked um, over on my patreon channel could I recommend you know a really good budget friendly student grade sort of watercolor paper that actually works because like I said before, it's a minefield out there. I've tried tons of this kind of stuff. Um, you know, practice papers, um, you know, bulk buy, bargain offers of watercolour papers, and they've all turned out to be rubbish, in all honesty. Even some of the, um, well, maybe I shouldn't say that, but just go and watch my review on the Moleskine sketchbooks. I mean, they're pricey sketchbooks, but the paper in them is awful. This is far superior paper to what you get in the Moleskine sketchbooks. This works a um, hundred times better you know and this is what I like about Dale Rowney there's no hype with them there's no you know overinflated sales pitch or anything like that they're a good honest no-nonsense company that make fantastic products that we can all afford you know and I've used their drawing papers since day one and I'm still using them today um, I've tried you know, loads of papers over the years, very expensive ones, very cheap ones, and I always come back to Dale Rowney 
for pretty much all of my paper. Um, even watercolour paper, I use the Langton and the Langton Prestige as well. Very good quality papers, and I've never ever been disappointed with anything that Dale and Rowney have ever made, even when they were two separate companies, um, you know, way back in the day. I used to get Rowney watercolours and Dale, uh, and Dale brushes, the old Dalon brushes, I don't know if you remember those. Um, and I use both companies' products, you know, for a long, long time, and I've always been 100% satisfied. And I still am today now the company has joined together. They're still producing, you know, people-friendly art materials, let's say, because, I mean, a lot of them aren't, are they? You know, it's kind of, okay, we've got arches at one end of the scale. Everybody's buying arches, you know, that can afford to do that. But not everybody can afford, you know, to buy arches watercolour paper. It's a ridiculous price, you know, in most people's eyes. But yeah, it's a fantastic paper. And yes, I do use that and I have got some. Um, but I always find that when I put a, a sheet of arches out on my painting board, the first thing that goes through my mind is, oh, better be careful. This costs a lot of money. Don't want to waste this. And when you approach a painting with that mindset, usually things go wrong it, it does for me anyway i mean how many times i mean let's be honest now i'll put my hand up to this how many times have you put your paper down on the board you've taped it down or you've clipped it down and you've thought right i'm going to be really careful i'm going to be really precise i'm going to get the detail i'm going to take my time this is going to be fantastic and you go at it with that mindset and it doesn't quite work out right it's not looking right and basically it's ruined so what you do you turn the paper over and while you've still got some wet paint mixed on your palette, you kind of just do a loose watercolour painting or something on the back. And it turns out fantastic because you're approaching it with a relaxed mindset, you know. So if cost is going to be an issue to you, you know, if it's going to inhibit you in any way, I would be definitely looking at papers like this because it doesn't matter. You know, you waste a sheet of this, you've not lost anything. You know, at £15 for 50 sheets of paper, it's not a lot of waste there, is it really? So I think these papers that are aimed um, more at beginners and students, you know, have a really strong and important place in the marketplace. Um, you know, and like I said, it's hard to actually find a good one that works well and behaves well with, you know, wet into wet techniques and things like that. But this one so far ticks all the boxes um, for me. So, yes, I do recommend this paper. Um, if you can't quite stretch to Bockingford, I would definitely go for this. In fact, I'm so impressed with this paper that I'm actually going to start buying it now and keeping it in stock. Um, and it's going to kind of be my go-to paper, just for taping on the board and just for, you know, messing about with practicing, doing loose watercolours, hate brush style paintings, you know, quick paintings, where I'm not too worried if they go wrong I've not lost anything, um, you know, and that's going to help you as a, as a painter, as a watercolourist, you know, to have this kind of, you know, cheap kind of paper just kind of sitting around in your studio, just to reach for when you're in that mood, just for a quick watercolour, you know, you don't want to ruin any expensive paper, um, you know, you just want to have a little practice, this kind of thing is ideal. And yes, you can do nice finished paintings on these as well, because I've done one or two and they've turned out okay. Um, so what I'm going to do, enough waffling on now, I'm going to take a piece of this out and I'm going to tape it to the board and we'll do some painting. Right, okay, so we're all taped up and ready to go. I'm going to wet the paper all over to start with, but before I, before I do, I'll just wet my brush. I'll just quickly mention that what I said before about you know, arches and everything. I don't want people thinking that this is going to be an alternative to arches watercolour paper. No, 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 certainly not. Um, I always recommend for beginners to buy the best quality paper that they can afford, preferably 100% cotton. If you can afford arches, go for arches because it's the most forgiving paper. Well, all of the 100% cotton papers are very forgiving papers and they all kind of behave just a little bit differently. Um, so for a beginner, you know, that's a bonus, isn't it? A more forgiving paper that's not going to, um, you know, cauliflower and have back runs and leave hard edges and nasty marks and things like that. So if you can possibly afford the best papers, my advice would be to buy them. That'll get you off to the best possible start, you know, if, if money is not an issue for you. Okay, so clean water, 
all over the paper we'll really saturate it and see you know if this buckles or you know any disasters happen with it there's more disasters happening with my brush actually it's shedding hairs look let's just flick them off that's it get rid of those So I haven't got anything planned, I'm just going to just dip into some of the colours which are already sort of semi-mixed on my palette and see what we can do. This is just a little bit of crimson with a little bit of yellow ochre mixed in. I'll just do some kind of landscapey type thing. And a little bit of cobalt blue. Now one thing I have noticed when I've been painting with this previously is it kind of shows your brush marks a little bit. But it does soften out as it dries, you know it's not too bad. So I'll do a fairly, let's try and do a, a sort of a graded wash here and you'll see what I mean. You know instead of going for any clouds or anything in the sky, well, let's just go for a completely flat looking sky. A little bit more blue at the top. I mean, I purposely leave a few streak marks in there, look, so that you can see how it dries. The paper itself I find to be very absorbent actually, you know, as soon as the paint goes on there, it really soaks in. And obviously that's to do with the amount of sizing that's on the surface of the paper there. Um, now some papers, the watercolour is going to sit on top a little bit and kind of burst out more and diffuse more. Uh, but this one doesn't quite do that quite so much. It does on the reverse side. The reverse side of the paper is a little bit less textured, a little bit smoother. And I've noticed that the watercolour kind of bursts out more on the surface of the paper there. But I actually like the way that this works because it you can work wet into wet more with this. So if I just get some sort of distant um, sort of tree line colour there. I'm not being careful at all here, I'm just, you know, any colours that are on my palette. That's a little bit too dark, so I'll just lighten it up a little bit. You know, you can see it's not gone mad and starting to spread all over the place. It's kind of staying where it is and just producing a nice soft diffused edge. I like that. That kind of gives you, you know, a nice bit of control. It's got a little bit of lemon yellow with some hawker's green in there. Just, just fill the paper up so it's all wet, completely wet. And we've got the first layer of watercolour on there. And it's not really buckling too much at all. I mean, for a cellulose paper, that's very good. Um, you know, as much as I like Buckingford, um, it does tend to buckle a little bit. Although I wouldn't class this the same as Buckingford, I mean, this kind of sits below Buckingford in quality. I have to be honest and say that. Um, but I don't think it buckles quite as much as Buckingford. And another thing you'll notice with this as well, um, as I noticed it actually, as soon as I took it out of the box, there was like a cellophane wrapper around the paper and as soon as I unpeeled that, I got this smell of like wallpaper paste and clay. Obviously that's the sizing that's on the paper. Not a bad smell, it was a very pleasant smell in fact. But as soon as you wet it, that smell gets a little bit stronger. Um, it's quite a nice smell, so don't let that put you off. It's not a stinky paper <laughs> or anything like that. It's quite a pleasant smell. Um, but it's something I'm not used to, you know, Buckingford doesn't do that and some of the other papers don't do that, so yeah, you, you, you'll notice that. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to dry this with the hair dryer now, just to speed things up a little bit. Okay, so that's fairly dry now. Still a little bit of buckling on there, actually. Uh, it's just very lightly damp, but I can kind of paint over that, there'll be no problem. So I'll just get some 
blue colour on there just for some distant trees. I'm not exactly sure what the colours are, it's like I say my palette's a right mess and I'm just kind of dipping into anything at the minute. I'm just going to kind of put a distant tree line in there, so some trees off into the distance. You know this isn't going to be a finished painting or anything like that, I just want to do a quick demonstration just so that you can see you know, the effects you can get with this paper. I want to be fairly quick about this because I want to wet edge along the bottom line there so I can feather that out with a little bit of water while it's still wet. Okay, I'll get the mop brush on that, I think. Just wet along the base. And again, I'm just going to dry that off camera with the hairdryer. Okay, so that's nice and dry. We have been left with a bit of a line across there, like a little bit of a mark, but I think that was probably because I had too much water on the brush. Um, so what I'm going to do, this will be a good test of the paper. I'm going to take a smaller brush and I'm just going to kind of just damp over that a little bit and just try and feather that out just a little bit more. See if we can lose that line. Or at least just kind of soften it back a little bit. Okay, so that's dry. Uh, I'm just trying to think. <laughs> what to actually put in there. I think we'll, we'll put some sort of hedge or something going across there and a couple of trees so that we can do the dry brush technique. Let's see if we can get a little bit of a random edge just along the bottom of that hedge there. Just before it dries out. Actually, that's not dark enough. Just put a little bit of Payne's grey in there just to darken up. Just along the base there. Like I say, it's not going to be a finished masterpiece or anything. some grass texture in there and then we can glaze over that and see how the paper performs with glazes see if it actually lifts up the paint underneath and again I'm just going to quickly dry that off camera with a hairdryer and I think just I don't know just to add a little bit of interest or something we'll just put a hedge or something going across there Okay, so while that's drying, I think I'm just going to glaze, glaze the front now and just see what happens there. In fact, I'm going to glaze the hedge as well. Warm the whole thing up a little bit, I think. Like I say, it's very loose and just kind of messing about. Just testing this paper just to see what it's capable of doing. Well, the paint doesn't pull up, that's for sure. So it's really suitable for glazing. I mean, just looking at it so far, um, you know, we have got a few hard edges, but again, they were put in dry, weren't they? So we can kind of expect that along the top. Um, 
but personally I think it's looking okay you can see you know where the paint really has soaked into the paper um, you know very quickly and not had time to you know diffuse some of the brush lines out like particularly in the sky but again it's still a soft line although you can still see the line it's still soft it's still very passable I think right okay so I'll put a couple of trees in using the dry brush technique so you can see the effect of that So as you can see, you can get some really nice texture, you know, from the grain of the paper there. It, it kind of does look like leaves, doesn't it? I mean, it's not exactly like leaves, but I think it's a really nice effect um, for leaves and, and foliage. I'm quite pleased with that. I'm just going to put a, a little bit of a suggestion of a tree trunk or something in there just to add a little bit of interest to it. So that's pretty much it. I mean, I think I'm just going to give it a little light glaze just there. I mean, really, I should spend a <laughs> you know a lot longer on this, but like I said, I just want to do a quick, quick test of the paper and use as many techniques as I can. So we've we've done the wet into wet, we've done some glazing. We've done some feathering out of some of the hard edges. The only thing left to do now is to see how the paint lifts. And we know it doesn't lift easily because these glazes, I can just keep putting them on almost when the paper's damp. So it's not a paper that's, um, you know, going to lift easily. So we'll just, we'll give it one more test when this is um, done. Or when it's dry, should I say? We could have gone a lot darker on this hedge as well. Probably end up spoiling this now. <laughs> Not that it's um, even important. It's like I say, you know, if this was arches or something, I'd be thinking, <gasps> don't do any more to that, you know. But because it's a nice, you know, inexpensive paper, I'm not bothered if this gets ruined. I mean, I'm not bothered anyway. It's like I say, it's just a test of a piece of paper. Um, but you can see, you know, we can kind of work back into it and it's not making a mess. You know, we've got time to mess about and fiddle around with this. It's quite a nice paper, you know, I wouldn't overlook this one. You know, dis despite the, you know, the price tag of it being, you know, very, very inexpensive. I mean, that's what put me off. I thought this has got to be rubbish. At that price, it's got to be rubbish. But it's absolutely not. It's an absolutely wonderful paper to use. In fact, I'll give Dale Rowney 10 out of 10 you know, for, for actually producing such a good quality paper at a very affordable price. You know, it's like I say, it's not Archie's, it's not Saunders or anything, but it just about gives Bockingford a good run for a money. It, it doesn't beat Bockingford at all. Um, it's, it's a 
it's a different kind of absorption rate and texture and everything to Bockingford. Um, I mean, another thing I've noticed as well, I mean, this might bother some people, it doesn't bother me, I actually like it. The fact that it does absorb quite a lot, it's kind of giving us a, a kind of granulation effect, even on pigments that aren't granulating. Um, and it's kind of subduing the watercolours a little bit. It's not like they're sitting on top of the paper and really looking strong and vibrant and kind of bursting out at you. You know, everything looks kind of subtle and subdued. And if that's the kind of look that you want in your landscapes and that's the effect that you like with your watercolours, you'll love this paper. Okay, so let's give it the final test and see if the paint lifts off, um, you know, nice and easy. So I've got just a small chisel edged brush there, just clean water and just slightly damp. And I'll just see if we can just lift some of this paint off. It's lifting off okay, look. But yet you can glaze it really easily without the paint lifting underneath. I really do like that. In fact, you know, not only am I impressed, you know, with the the price of this paper and the quality of it, and it's not buckling all over the place. It actually behaves and works really, really well. You know, it's not like a cheap paper where you think, oh, let's just use that cheap stuff, even though I don't enjoy using it. You will enjoy using this. It's, it's a really nice paper. So I'm sure you'll be seeing me using this, you know, quite a bit more. I'll perhaps get into some pencil and wash with it next time and uh, see how it performs with that. So all in all, nothing really bad to report with this paper at all, other than the fact that it does leave brush marks a little bit, but again, you can use that to your advantage if you want to. It's just a different experience, you know, using this paper compared to, like I say, you know, one of the more expensive um, cotton papers. Yeah, this, I mean this painting needs a lot of work doing to it, it needs a lot more glazing and layers and everything. But I'm going to leave it there for now because this is, like I say, it's just a test of the paper, nothing more, nothing less. But I will just do one more thing. Where I've lifted off the paint there, sometimes um, it can leave marks when you glaze over them. So I'll just see, see if that's the case. Oops, too much paint there. No, that's fine. Like I say, it kind of ticks all the boxes, doesn't it? I think it's really wonderful paper, this. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to, you know, doing more paintings with this. That's how good it is. You know, when a paper has that effect on you, you know, when you can't wait to do a painting on the paper, I think that says a lot. So definitely 10 out of 10 for David Dale Rowney there for producing such a good quality paper at a ridiculously inexpensive price that everybody can afford and I think pretty much most people will be happy with the results they get on this paper. Okay, so I'll just peel this off just so we can see, see what we've done there. I'm really impressed the way it dries out really, well, it is almost perfectly flat. There's just a little bit of a bump just there, but the paper does stay damp for quite a while. I'm kind of imagining that when this is completely thoroughly dry after several hours, it'll be absolutely flat as a pancake. Really do like this paper, I really do, it's fantastic stuff. 
okay so thanks very much for watching i hope you enjoyed that and i hope it was helpful to you any questions please ask um and if you've not clicked the notification bell at the side where it says subscribe please click that because a couple of people have contacted me and said that they've not been getting notifications for my videos when they upload you've got to click that bell at the side of the subscription button um, and you'll get notified of all the uploads then okay so thanks very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one take care everybody bye for now